Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome to Fallout 4's Contraptions DLC, the fourth DLC pack of what turns out to be six. Turns out that there are going to be six in total, and you could, well, they have said will be the last one, so this is the fourth. And this is, this is an interesting one. In some ways, it is superior to Wasteland Workshop, because this actually introduces some stuff that's actually quite useful. Wasteland Workshop, I actually, I probably liked more than I liked Contraptions, because Wasteland Workshop added a whole bunch of lights, and for me, lights are really important, because I'm kind of more in it for the atmosphere than anything else. But in some ways, objectively, this is probably more useful, because there's actually some useful stuff that's been added in by this DLC. Speaking of which, let's start off with the useful stuff, shall we? Now, as the DLC is called Contraptions, it probably shouldn't be a particularly big surprise to learn that some of the most exciting stuff lives in the power section. In fact, there is a whole new section there called Manufacturing. This is the stuff that arguably makes this DLC the most interesting, because this actually adds utility to your settlements which is very, very useful indeed. So basically, uh, this kind of introduced the conveyor belts. We saw the conveyor belts. We didn't really see much of this in the trailer, the actual manufacturing machinery. Basically, what this means is, yeah, you can set up various machines that build various things. They've got quite a big power draw, so you might well need to build one of the new fusion reactors for 100 power if you want to actually be having a decent-sized factory going on. What you can have is, like, different things that produce different items. So one build-up hooked up to enough power. You know it's got enough power because this little conveyor belt starts going. And then just have a terminal wired into the same grid somewhere. Use the terminal to set what the builder should start producing. So let's just pick a random item here. Let's just take a teddy bear, nice little item. And it tells you what it needs to make a teddy bear. Because this is, rather than scrapping an item, this machine is basically an inverted scrapper. So it takes the components you get out of a thing, and it lets you turn those components back into a thing. Which probably doesn't initially sound very, very useful. I mean, it's cool, let's just show it off. It's very, very cool indeed. But it's not necessarily that useful, because you're not making a net gain of components. There is a minor irritation, by the way, which is this thing doesn't hook up to the settlement workshop that it's actually in. You need to go and manually put what it needs in there. And there we go, one teddy bear has popped out of the back here. Except, of course, you'll probably notice immediately a teddy bear contains a leather and three cloth, whereas to actually produce a teddy bear with this thing, you actually make a loss. It's not perfectly efficient. So a teddy bear is in fact two leather and four cloth. So by producing teddy bears, you're not making a gain in components. Well then, what's the point of this thing? Well, the point of this thing is one, to make kind of rare items that you might just like having like Giddy Up Buttercup. The only one that's actually useful, as far as I can tell, is the Vault Tech Lunchbox, which you need to make bottle cap mines, which are really, really, really powerful, and effectively a source of infinite money, because they produce caps when they explode from magic or something. But yeah, you can produce Vault Tech Lunchboxes. Otherwise, you can't produce these. Voltec lunch boxes are actually probably the only thing that the main junk thing is useful, but that's still a really useful thing to get. Let's just set it to produce these. And for three steel, three steel for a Voltec lunch box is a great deal. So I can now just plug some steel into this thing and start it producing. But of course, if I start it producing, it'll just all kind of come off the end and fall down. So let's have a look at the other things we've got going on here, which is the other kind of... Well, this one's kind of less important, but it's kind of like it fits into the manufacturing quite nicely. Which is, of course, you need to be having yourself some conveyor belts. Conveyor belts do understandably, by the way, have a correct order, which is if you want to turn a um, particular direction, it does have to be the right one. So you can't put it this way. So of course, if you were to put it this way, then all the stuff would crowd onto the end, but because of the way the conveyor belt would be working, it wouldn't actually go over that way. So the conveyor belts actually work intelligently. You need to actually have the right one if you want them to go into a particular direction. The reason you might want these is if you actually want to have a proper factory production line and produce things faster. Now, weirdly, I'm looking at this now, and while I can see multiple ways that you could actually use this machinery to take one track and make it kind of split out, so I can make a kind of a splitter here that makes like, uh, you know, if I want to say sort one item one way and one item another, if I was producing multiple items, I can't actually see a way, interestingly, of uh, actually kind of bringing multiple tracks together, which I really would have thought was kind of the point. Because like, if I want to have like a machine here and then a machine here and a machine here, then I might want to have them all running like into like all of them onto one conveyor belt that starts here and runs in this direction. But I can't actually see a way you do that, because there's no kind of bringing tracks together piece. 
Right, to see if I can test this, let's build something a little bit more on the advanced. Wait, hang on. Why would you clip there? You blatantly shouldn't clip there, because then it'll just kind of end up this conveyor belt going this way. And then, yeah, that's that's kind of odd that you would have done that, but all right. Uh, yeah, that will blatantly go the wrong way. Let's see if I can actually create what I'm planning to do here, because I think I might be able to improvise a merging system. That doesn't seem like it would work very, very well. So if I just kind of put something... If I put this about here-ish thereabouts and then just run a conveyor belt forward then I might be able to create a merged track here. Yeah there we go that should work it's a little bit on the fiddly side but yeah if you kind of run a corner into just some rollers and then the rollers will hopefully move uh, the things on this piece over to here so therefore you can merge multiple tracks onto this assuming this works let's actually just check it does actually work so we've got another conveyor belt here these things as far as i can tell just seem to as long as the main one has power they just seem to run anyway because i don't think i've actually got like a decent source of power around here but this one seems to be running so i think they're conducting power to each other Possibly this one's picking power off the machine, then it's transmitting it down. I'm not sure exactly how the power's working around here. Like most of these things, this one has a big power drain. The energy weapon one, especially 15 power. Yeah, definitely might be needing one of the big nuclear thingies. Let's build some more generators. Okay, whole bunch more generators and my new... No, 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 not you. Whole bunch more generators and my new energy thing is now wired into the grid. Yep, that's got enough power because it's conveyor belts going. So now because it's wired into the same grid as the terminal, we can use the terminal to turn this one on too. Now this is obviously where things get a bit more interesting because while you can just pick up junk anyway and you're making a loss, in this case, you're actually producing weapons that might theoretically be useful to you because yes building your own gatling laser building your own gatling laser could theoretically actually be useful because as far as i can tell there's nothing to stop you just building this like well actually um the criteria is there are kind of you know skill checks but relatively low level skill checks this could be a way of getting very early game guns so to produce one gatling laser you need Quite a bit of stuff. Like, that's way more than you'll obviously get from scrapping it down. So, again, you can't make a scrap profit doing this unless you're building something, like, unique that you wouldn't normally be able to get your hands on. Or there's a finite number of them, like the vault Tech lunchboxes. But, yeah, this thing requires quite a heavy investment of springs, plastic, nuclear material. But if you could power it, yes, you could theoretically have yourself a Gatling laser. Let's go for something a little bit simpler. Yeah, this wouldn't be so bad for the early game. Four adhesive, three circuitry, two crystals, fiber optics, two glass, two nuclear material, eight screws, 15 steel. For a plasma gun, to get a really early game plasma gun, that is not too bad at all. Let's build an armor forge as well, see what this old girl produces. And again, one armor forge has now been kind of brought into this area. Actually, have you already already powered no you're not powered it's just for some reason this thing is i don't know where the hell this is drawing power from but it's working so that's all fine but yeah armor forge available at armor one meaning you're actually allowed to get this at level two uh weapon forge gun nut one again you can have that at level two energy weapon forge requires science two that's a little bit later therefore yeah that's locked to level 17 so yeah once you get to level 17 being able to produce your own gatling laser if you've got the resources for it a level 17 gatling laser that's not so bad so level two weapon forge lovely energy weapon we just said Heavy Weapon Forge. Ah, interestingly, not tied to Heavy Gunner. That's tied to Gun Nut 3, so that's a little bit later on in the game. That's probably a little bit too late to be that useful, to be honest. Ammunition Plant. Gun Nut 1 and Science 1, so you can have this at level 3. The Explosive Mill, I think, to be honest, feels quite useless to me because I can already produce demolitions. I've got a chemistry station, you know, right here in Sanctuary Hills, so I could just produce as much as I want from that. So, like, I understand the purpose of these ones, it's because it's produ letting you produce stuff you wouldn't normally be able to get necessarily. It's producing stuff you'd have been able to craft before. I don't really understand what the point of an explosives mill is, really. Meanwhile, a food processor, though theoretically useful on survival mode, I can't see you'd get much use out of producing your own food, really. Again, I just don't quite get the point when there's so much food just growing everywhere. So, let's have a look see at this armor forge here. Again, remind that you can just get this at level 2. Ah! Now, this is where things get interesting. Being able to produce your own leather armor heavy. Now, even when Bacon was like level 51, I did not run into much heavy gear. 
at all. That was relatively rare. So being able to produce your own heavy gear, albeit it's not legendary stuff, Leather 10, Ballistic Fibre 2, Steel Fibre Adhesive 4, that is very, very reasonable for heavy leather gear. As soon as you've got the materials for it at level 2, that's kind of amazing. In fact, in fact, Combat Armor Heavy? Bloody hell, wow, okay. So basically you'd need to buy a shipment of Ballistic Fibre most likely. Uh, but again, like they're guaranteed, I think that's a guaranteed drop from Clio in Good Neighbor, so that's fine. Then aluminium times 10, little pricey, you'd really rather be spending that on power armor, but still, not bad. And adhesive 7, if you've got an adhesive farm, that should be fine. Wow, okay, that's really light. That's a really nice, easy way to be producing your own gear. That's, that's pretty impressive, actually. I like that armor forge. Anyway, let's get one of these going, shall we? Just actually check my actual little kind of model actually works. So I've just shoved 200 steel into this thing and started chugging. Why? Because I've told it to produce Vault Tech lunch boxes. So it's going to start making those one at a time. There's a Vault Tech lunch box. And that's, yeah, just three steels worth. Three steel, incredibly cheap, just, oh darn it. Why don't you work? Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, just, just, just stop for a second. Oh, now you work. Why didn't you work a second ago? And now you get stuck there. Okay, now there's an actual thing. Oh, why do we get the thing that's not going to work annoyingly? Because there's a thing there. Why do we get the thing that's not actually going to work at all? I was kind of hoping, yeah, the rollers would get it across. But that bar there, I suspect, means this is not going to work. Also, can I just stand on this? Yes, I can. That's nice. I can just be carried around myself with a conveyor belt if I want. If you're feeling very, very lazy, you can just build a conveyor belt from your bed leading out to the entrance to Sanctuary Hills. Marvellous. Right, come on. Come on, little vault tech lunchbox. I believe in you. Just kind of get your way over the top of the thing. Get your way over the top. No, of course you're not going to. Ah, Bethesda and crafting. Good ideas, poor execution. So how are you supposed to merge multiple things? What you can do is a branch, but that just lets you divide in two based on what's going on with diverters, which you can kind of put in place on those pieces. Okay, I've got a plan. I've got a plan. It's all going to be fine. What happens if... Just trying to improvise a way to make this actually bloody work the way I want it to. Uh, okay, what if we just kind of put this one here. We get rid of these for the time. Oh, right. So now those... Okay, now those just go over the edge. Right, well now I've got all of the Voltaic lunchboxes. Marvellous. The only way I can find to make this work is to have one powered track that needs to be kind of wired in. Uh, down at the bottom here. That needs to be wired because it needs to be powered because these things are definitely drawing power from the main machines. And then have, yeah, that'd be like the main track. And then have all other machines just emptying onto it from above. And that should, at that point, work. And then you can have as many machines as you want emptying from above onto this one. But it feels really weird there's not a joining piece. You actually just need to do emptying from above and that's the only option. Okay, so now, now it can produce things. Yep, it's going to produce a lunchbox. Come on. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Here comes a lunchbox. And then the lunchbox changes direction. Goes onto here. And then should fall onto this one. Marvellous. So now as many builders as I put into one place could all basically start going on to the same thing. So if I kind of if all of these were just basic builders, I could be producing these three times as fast and having all of them come onto the same conveyor belt. But that of course is very, very scruffy. So what exactly are you going to do that's a little bit more efficient than that? Well, let's just pull this out of here for the moment. Well, that's what some of the stuff here in miscellaneous at the end is for. You've got these sorters, which basically means if you're producing multiple things and putting them onto a single conveyor belt, you can sort uh, one way or the other. But yeah, the one that you really want is the conveyor storage. So basically stores items delivered by conveyor belt. So rather than just making a pile of them, they're actually entering a storage locker, which is nice. Ah, but irritatingly, this one can't go down onto the ground. Ah, there's no small upward ramp at all. That's downward only because of course it's one way only. So the only way to get one that's on the floor up a level is to flipping have, because that's again, that's just downward. So the only way to do this now is to actually have a full flipping powered conveyor belt lift that takes things up that flipping, I don't want them to be that high, but all right, fine. Robot workbench, get out of the way for a second. Luckily, this doesn't need to be wired in. It's drawing power from whatever grid it's being attached to indirectly because all the conveyor belts act as power strips. So it's drawing two power out of the same grid that the actual conveyor belts wired into, so it doesn't need to be freshly powered. 
So the machine produces the Vault Tech lunchbox. And as many machines as I want can be producing like the same thing if they're the same sort of machine. It falls down here and goes into here, into this conveyor belt lift. So in a moment, as soon as it's kind of done, it'll kind of pop out of the top. I assume they kind of go in a little kind of little group of them. And I really, really bloody hope this is actually going to work at this point. Yep, come on. And then round the outside of the... Round the... No. Okay. This time, with some more conveyor belts shoved up top, this is all going to go fine. Yep, okay. So... The lunchbox goes up here, drops off the edge. I bear in mind that all of this has been built just because there isn't a bloody joining T-junction piece. Which I would have thought would be like the most obvious thing in the world. It comes out of the top, goes round the conveyor belt, round this conveyor belt, drops down the final little bit, and gets sucked into this machine. Now that machine has one Voltec lunchbox in it. And now I can just leave this be and it will just start producing itself and moving into here and I can just come back later and there'll be more and more lunch boxes here. What I am curious about is whether that happens when I'm away from settlements or not because there's enough, uh, you know, there should be enough material in there to produce, uh, what, like 30 more flipping Volt Tech lunch boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly fast travel away and back and we're going to see what happens. Okay, so it's probably been about two days or something and no, time freezes in your manufacturing when you're not here because there's only like five or six and I've been away like a full 24 hours of in-game time. So manufacturing does not continue while you are away, which... I understand how the game engine kind of works like that, that when you're not there, things don't really happen unless they're being generated like, you know, Defender Settlement, for example. But it is a little disappointing that, yeah, the whole point of manufacturing and automation and conveyor belts is so that you can automate things and leave them to it. But apparently, if you're not sitting nearby at the time, nothing happens, which kind of defeats the point of automation, at least for things you could produce yourself. In fact, that makes the um, the um, the explosives one look like completely pointless because it's always going to be faster. Just hammer A on the chemistry workbench than automating like this. There just will be absolutely no point whatsoever. But yes, there you are. That is that's the manufacturing. Like the utility of it is going to be getting hold of energy weapons moderately early. But the real strength is getting hold of really good quality armor at level two and three if you can just get together enough leather. Cause just like think about it. Just Level 2, take armor 1, go down to Concord, kill raiders until you've got enough leather armor, blend that with one shipment of ballistic fiber from Good Neighbor, and yeah, you can actually have heavy armor relatively early on in the game. That could be very, very impressive indeed. Fun idea, unquestionably cool, let down by just some really, really bloody weird emissions. Like, where are the joining cross pieces? Where is, like, the crossroads piece so that, like, three things from three different directions can merge in? Now, I've just built the auto loom, the clothes producing one, because I kind of want to know what the hell the point of it is. Um, are any of these any good? No. None of those are spectacular. Uh, yeah, every single one of those clothes, you might well just kind of get a random chance of just finding around Sanctuary Hills anyway, like within minutes of beginning the game, and none of those are like the spectacular one. Uh, the black suit, I think that's, that's a good Charisma Plus 2 item, I guess, if you want one. Um, yeah, none of those strike me as particularly worth having, so the auto loom feels kind of pointless, to be honest. The food processor, meanwhile, let's have a look see what this one makes. So, that produces old world food. Now, that is... Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> that's pretty terrible. Because um, old world food gives you rads. Like, the only mode this will really be useful in is survival mode. And in survival mode, why would you ever be eating old world food when you could just be killing creatures and getting food out of them. That's kind of interesting. Well, what kind of takes to make these? If I'm going to want to make a mac and cheese, I question whether you can truly make mac and cheese out of razor grain, one carrot, some purified water, and some plastic. Oh, and here's possibly the worst conversion you can do in the entire game. If you want one cram, a kind of crappy healing item that gives you rads and doesn't give you that much kind of benefit in terms of hunger, you need to sacrifice one Brahmin meat, one radstag meat, and one mongrel dog meat. 
or to put it another way, three items that you could just take straight to any normal cooking stove and convert immediately into three much superior meals that don't give you rad. So that's that's the worst exchange in the game. Oh, here's a terrible one as well. Potato crisps. If you want some potato crisps, you're going to have to be giving up an aluminium and an oil. Two things that honestly you're really going to want to be saving for important weapon and armor crafting. Okay, so those ones are completely terrible and pointless. So I've just jumped universe to original John. Good old original John in that lovely hat there. We all love original John. Yeah, and original John actually has a massive power thing as well. Original John also has loads of ranks of gun nuts. So we can actually test out the other machines as well. So I've just built myself a weapon forge, a heavy weapon forge, and an ammunition plant. Now the ammunition plant, that's the one I've kind of got my eyes on here. Let's have a look see what we get out of this. So weapon forge again, this is one you can get really, really early on in the game. So you can be producing 10mm pistol, 44 caliber, an early game combat shotgun. That could be worth having. So adhesive 6, 2 gears, 3 oil, some screws, some springs. That's not too difficult. That's not too bad at all. You could get yourself a very early game combat shotgun at level 2 or 3 by just scrounging together this equipment. That will be very worth having. Early game flamer might be kind of fun as well. I'm not sure where you get an early game one of them, to be honest. And actually, that's really light and easy to make. 8 adhesive, 2 asbestos, 3 screws, 2 springs, and 10 steel. You can make a flipping flamer. That's, that feels very generous, in fact. And a hunting rifle. Yeah, very good basis for a kind of a sniper rifle. Again, pretty light. It's the screws that are expensive. Yeah, you'd really probably have to take like one rank of gun nut and then another rank of scrapper and then just scrap the hell out of kind of uh, everything around Concord. You'd probably be able to pull that off. So you'd be able to get some very early game weapons, which is kind of nice. Combat rifle two, actually, that's not too bad. And that one is, oh, that one's even heavier, 13 screws. Yeah, 13 screws might be a bit of an ask, but yeah, some decent stuff there. Now, Heavy Weapon Forge. I failed to see how this one can possibly be useful because it doesn't become unlocked until Gun Nut 3, which is, what's that, somewhere in the 30s or something, somewhere in the level 30s. By the time you're level 30, you don't need to be producing your own Fat Man minigun or missile launcher. You've kind of picked all these weapons up, like minigun you get in Concord. Fat Man, there's one of that little kind of rubbish dump just around the, um, just around the corner, around the, uh, the edge of the lake from uh, Sanctuary Hills. Missile launcher, you can get them all over the shop. There's one that's kind of a uh, super mutant with a guaranteed spawn of one nearby in Boston. I have no idea why, when you actually are high enough level to have gun up through, you'd ever be wanting to produce this stuff. I mean, yeah, that's, that's valuable, that's valuable junk and components. I don't know why you'd really, yeah, that, that one's pointless. That one's completely pointless. Never build a heavy weapon forge. Ammunition though, this one requires, I believe, one gun nut and one science. You can have this by level three. And this is kind of interesting, if I kind of want to have 10mm rounds. Lead and fertilizer. With the kind of little Brahmin bathtub thing, you've basically got an infinite source of fertilizer. Lead's not the most common component, mind. Oh, and that's a single round, is it? Ooh, that's interesting. Two lead, two plastic, and two fertilizer for a shotgun shell. Yeah, might be useful, but honestly, if that is genuinely a single round, I'm going to check that. There we go, shove some fertilizer and lead in there, and it is kicked out. 10 millimeter round. Ah, take times 10. Okay, so it wasn't actually a single one. It was times 10. All right. Ah, I've just learned something very useful and valuable there, which is you don't actually need to break it down. If you put something that has the right components in it, then this machine can break it down by itself. So I just had a one lead and one pencil, which contains one lead in this machine. And that was uh, good enough for it to spit out some shotgun ammo. And the shotgun ammo is, again, times 10. Okay, so it's not one bullet, it's times 10 of each sort. So, you know, that's not too bad. That's an okay source, though. Actually, I did just notice and realise, okay, maybe this is how Bethesda's intending for you to link things together. These can all just flow. Can they just flow into each other? Bethesda? They've clearly, it's clearly got a rear panel. Yes, okay, so... <laughs> The way Bethesda sees this going is you're supposed to have all of your conveyor belts feeding into each other and more and more stuff being dumped onto them as they go along. Right, that's not the way I would have kind of foreseen it, but okay, fine. Yeah, if you want to have like, basically you want to have everything on one track and to do that, you therefore need a massive long line of these guys. But to be honest, like there's going to be plenty of settlements where you simply, there's not like a convenient space for you to have a massive long line of these things. Though I guess like, 
there's nothing to stop you like having say a 180 degree corner or rather two 90 degree corners here and then have it run back on itself but yeah that's that's kind of a weird way of doing it i'd rather have just you know had t junctions so i had the option to have them lined up next to each other if i wanted to but all right fine that's apparently that's how Bethesda kind of saw it working. Even a conveyor belt like the producer's food is supposed to put the food onto a conveyor belt and then that's supposed to go through all the other different types of crafting and that's just fine and then you just sort it later. Not that you really need to sort it by the way. The easiest way to sort it is just to skip sorting entirely. Just stick one of the, um, just like skip the sorting. Shove a comp- just to shove a storage at the end of it and then like you know just go into the storage thing and then just sort in that menu there because then you can sort between weapons and ammunition i kind of don't even know what the point of the sorting station is it's just easy just to shove everything into one conveyor storage and then sort it from there i mean i guess other than like for lore or role-playing reasons i don't see much point in sorting anything so back with bacon that's probably enough chatter about conveyor belts and manufacturing honestly it's the most interesting thing about this DLC to my mind, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good idea and may have some uses in the early game, but uh, for the most part, I don't think it's necessarily going to be that useful to most people, and it's a little bit clunkily laid out, but all right, fine, what have you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there is a little bit more here than I was expecting, so I'm going to split this into two and go over the rest of the new stuff in the DLC tomorrow. But don't worry, as we've had to split this in two, that will not be the only video tomorrow. We will do double video tomorrow, because tomorrow I also want to put out the 200,000 subscribers special. Hooray, 200,000 subscribers. That's amazing. Yes, I've got a very, very special video planned for that tomorrow, so that will be coming tomorrow. And I think I need to double check with that, but I'm pretty sure uh, we do have a podcast tomorrow as well. So tomorrow, live stream and more Fallout and something very special for 200,000. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been my look at the conveyor belts and machinery of Fallout 4 Contraptions. Thank you very much and goodbye. Just got to weaken the base of this a little bit more. Yes. Yes. Good news, I'm protecting you! Alex Mason, the man who can literally run as fast as a speeding truck. This game is basically just badasses don't look at explosions the game, isn't it? Oh, ho, 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 ho.